What's up guys, T-Max here. Today is something special. Today I'm joined by Angel. Hello. And <laughs> a lot of people have asked us how we met each other, uh, what our stories are. We actually have a very interesting story because, well, our stories as individuals come together as one lifelong story. It's really interesting. So we're not gonna take all day doing this. We're just gonna kind of zip over the details just to kind of start from the beginning. When we were younger, both of our moms were into uh, the flea market scene. They would get a bunch <laughs> of crap together, especially her yeah. mom, who was like the pro at it. They would get all this stuff together and they would drag us down to the flea market. And we went to the same flea market, Kitty's Flea Market in Albany, Georgia. And uh, I don't ever remember seeing her because it was such a big place. And you could run around and kids get lost, not wearing any shoes, just getting <laughs> dirt all over their feet and crap. It was. It was amazing like that we didn't get snatched up or something. And then there was also, uh, tell them about the horse arena. Uh, there was a horse arena around the corner from my grandma's house and we were living with my grandmother at the time. And I used to always kind of cut through the woods and go watch the people barrel race and all that kind of stuff in the horse arena. Well, my dad lived down the road, like two oh, minutes okay. from the place, but my mom did the barrel racing yeah, stuff there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah we were on the same page. <laughs> So his mom was actually one of the people riding the horses. So I could have been watching his mom, you know, do barrel races and stuff the whole time and probably even seen him out there and not even realized it because we were- We were young and I was probably yeah. pouting over in the corner because my mom took my Power Ranger <laughs> toys. There's an actual old <laughs> picture of me doing that. I got my cowboy hat on and stuff and I'm just pouting next to a fence. So beyond those two things, we went to the same high school. Funny thing is I went to a private school, Tift Area Academy. And then in the ninth grade, 10th grade, I transferred to Worth County High in about 2005, the same year she graduated. So as I'm coming into Worth County, she is leaving. So we just barely missed each other. So that's three places at least that we just barely missed each other our whole lives. After I graduated, I went to Bruton, Bruton Parker College for ministry. And about a year into it, it just shut down. They just shut down. They really screwed a lot of people over. They didn't give us any warning. They just shut down. And I kind of wavered in my faith. I was going there for ministry. And I kind of wavered in my faith because I was like, ah, I'm going for ministry. I thought I was doing the right thing, but yet I still got screwed. And at the time, like right after that, I got married. I don't think any of you knew that, but uh, <laughs> I got married. I was 21. 21? And um, <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, <laughs> I got married, I got a job at Applebee's in Tifton, Georgia, and guess who I met there? Okay, so eventually I quit Applebee's because it was a very hostile work environment, And uh, but when I quit Applebee's, I didn't really have anything else lined up, so I moved to South Carolina where my uh, ex-wife was from. Stayed there for a while, but I applied to a welding school, and wow. out of 300 people, I was in the top 1%. And so, uh, but- Top 1% of what? 300 people. We took a test and I was in the top one oh. She thinks I'm a dummy. Look at Shut you. Shut up, all right. <laughs> I was waiting for months for them to get back to me. I waited so long, it wasn't working. I left and I came back to Poland, got a divorce. And by the time I got a divorce, moved back to Poland, they called me, offered me the job. This was like months and months later. So yeah, it was kind of destiny, I guess, that I wouldn't get that job. I had to move to turn it down. Otherwise it would have been a great job, but I'm back home in Poland, living with mommy. I wait a while because I didn't know if my wife was gonna take me back or not. I wondered her to. And when I finally just said, you know what? I've waited, you know, two or three months. I don't think she's gonna take me back. I got a job at Starbucks in Tifton. During that time, what were you up to? I went to Georgia Southern and once I graduated, me and my then fiance, you know, moved back to Tifton. And since neither one of us had jobs coming out of school, we moved in with his parents. And that's kind of what we were doing while Never do that, by the way. Yeah. Because I did the same thing. It's just, it is. Oh, you lived? We lived with my mom for a bit, then we moved in with her family in South Carolina, and that is just, you don't do that. It's a recipe for disaster. Don't get married until you have a good job, education, and you can afford to have your own house with your spouse. It was a nightmare, needless to say. So um, we did we did find our own little place for a couple of months, but it didn't last long because neither one of us had good jobs and we were struggling. That was back when the economy was just in the toilet. But while I was working at Applebee's, this was the second time uh, after Georgia Southern because I couldn't find a job. I had a bachelor's. And she met me. Yeah. I had a bachelor's in biology and I couldn't find a job anywhere, not in Tifton. And I actually applied 
What was that? Keep talking. I applied all over the country and never got phone calls or anything. Nobody was hiring anyone. So I started back working at Applebee's and met TJ. And of course, you know, at the time I was married, he was married. We didn't look at each other that way. I left. She stayed. Uh, some stuff happened. She separated, moved in with a friend slash not good roommate. Well, yeah, we were we were best friends at the time. We worked at Applebee's together. I needed a roommate because I could not afford a place on my own. I didn't even have a car at the time because my car died. I bought it, and three weeks later, it exploded. So. Boom! Sorry. Ah. Sorry, it was just such a good opportunity. Just, uh. just push through it. Your eardrum will grow back. No mm. worries. <laughs> Um, I'll bet. <laughs> What's pretty funny is that at this time, I was over at uh, the house that she stayed at with this guy. It was funny because she didn't like me because I was a Christian and she wasn't at the time. She was agnostic. She had faith when she was younger, lost the faith. And at this time, she does she does not have her faith. I don't even know what I brought up. I, don't, I probably didn't even bring up anything, but she knew I was a Christian, so she did not like me. She was just mean to me. And it's funny I because- was, I was defensive towards you, I guess. You are still defensive. All right, but <laughs> I even remember Kane was her dog. She's had Kane for nine years. Mm -hmm. I even remember a time when we when we started dating, as we went to the uh, vet that she had always been taking Kane to, and I was yeah. like, this place looks really familiar. It's because I had taken her and Kane to that vet years before, before we started dating, <laughs> and she didn't even remember it. Nope. So, well, I, I got so many car rides from so many different friends and coworkers and stuff because so, I didn't have a car, so I didn't remember you. She remembers me. somebody took her and Kane to the vet one time, but didn't remember who. Yeah, and I was like, that was me. <laughs> and uh, so it was just really interesting, which means I meant so little to her <laughs> that when she saw me again, we started dating. She didn't even recognize me. <laughs> you. Uh, left your husband, you moved in with this other guy who is gay, um, so they, they weren't together, uh, they were just roommates yeah, we're and friends, roommates. Uh, and she met another guy. Now, tell us about that guy. All right, this other guy that I met, I met him while I was working at Applebee's. Uh, he was a customer, just came in one night, and he was relentless. I was not attracted to him, did not like him in the least bit. I guess that's kind of my pattern. I don't like people, and then they grow on me, like a fungus, I guess. But um, Thanks. <laughs> I started just chit chatting with him and long story short, we ended up going on a few dates, I really started to fall for him and like him. And I'm, I'm summing up a four year relationship here. So we were together for about four years. We got together, got engaged, bought a house. I found out earlier on in our relationship that he had cheated on me, but it was one of those like first strike. We worked through it. Later on, I found out that he had cheated on me at least three different times with three different women at least he was talking to a lot more when i found out the last time it was actually the day after his birthday we were out celebrating his birthday and his mistress sent me a facebook message and kind of outed him then i finally had enough i finally left i prayed for the first time in like 10 years because I just needed guidance. I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know who to turn to. You know, I owned a house with this person. Um, I didn't know what to do. I turned to God and I started to pray and was just asking him what I needed to do. And I got an overwhelming sense that I was heard and that he was with me and that even though I had turned my back on him, he had never once turned his back on me. I found grace or grace found me. I really started praying and about everything and asking God what I needed to do about that situation. I'm kind of weird about signs. I don't know if I really do believe in signs or if it's more of just, you know, God's, God's little way of saying, hey, listen to me you know i was looking for a church to go to hadn't been haven't stepped foot in church in years i went to google and typed in church of gods in tifton there were three of them the first one i had never heard about i knew i knew of the other two but i had never heard of the other one so i was curious about it and clicked on the link it seemed really what i needed at the time because their motto was a house of healing hope and help Something like, uh, that. something like that. Three H's. Yeah. So, um, and that's what I needed. I needed healing. I needed hope, and I needed help. So, uh, so I had already decided. Okay, that's where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Wednesday night 
just you know as soon as I as soon as I can that same afternoon I go to the doctor's office and on my way home this white car just pulls out in front of me and I'm having to slam on brakes and I'm on the phone with one of my friends and I look at this car and I just burst out in tears and started crying while I was on the phone with my friend because this car had LSU stickers and stuff in the back windshield. So LSU is my team. So I see this white car with LSU stuff all over it. And then there's a Union Grove Church of God bumper sticker on the car. I was like, I hear you, God. I see, this is where I need to go. I, this is the place I've got to go. This is the place I'm meant to be. So I listened to the signs and that's where I went.